to verify real quick. Okay. Let's see. Right. All right, I want to assume I'm on because I'm watching a commercial. Testing, testing, testing. This is up. This is up. Alrighty. So today, let me see if there's any loose ends I need to wrap up here. Um, buh, 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 buh. Uh, oh yeah, key registration. Let's try that. I'm going to do a little bit of key registration work and then we'll go on to what I'm probably really for real going to be doing today. So for example, if I wanted to say, do I have anything posed? Yeah, we'll do this guy. We're going to go into commander here. Uh, ZBrush. Jeez. Render posed all one. That'll work. Hey guys, thanks for showing up. Oh, stretch. Oh, you know what? Mm, I might have to stop and get some water in a second. We'll see how long I can go without having a drink. Okay. Got this person here. And we're going to see if we can't come up with a way to do some key registration that's like super unique. So what I'm going to do, go to subtool, delete other, I don't need all that stuff. And then on this one here, probably I don't need um, subdivision levels, but we can probably just do a light boolean as well. So for example, if I want to, if I want to cut this arm and I don't want to do it where it's just a straight across plane like we did. So uh, you know what, if in order for me to do subtractive meshes, I'm going to go ahead and append a dummy object. Not to be mean, but it's just going to sit there and act as something that's hidden. And I can set this to subtractive if I need to. And now I can simply go in here and do a, a cube. And then uh, we can split that off or we can keep it as part of that negative subtractor mesh. And we can go through here and we can say scale it up like so. And of course it cuts through my object. And now I have a slice here and then we can put our registration on there. So it's going to have like one cube that goes in, one cube that goes out. I've already done that video. And if we turn on our live Boolean render, you're going to see, okay, we can slice through the arm. But what if, and I'm just winging it here, what if we wanted to do in something that like cuts along this plane here or like this plane up here and for speed demonstration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and delete higher on that one. We don't need that much resolution. So if I wanted to do a more complex cut through the object along a kind of a seam line, in this particular case, I don't, I didn't really leave myself a whole lot of wiggle room in here hmm, on that particular pose, but we can give it a shot. Let's say this is the seam line I want to cut across. So one way I could do this is I could mask it. And then let's go ahead and duplicate this off. And if I want to maintain this or be able to select it later, one thing I can do is I can control tap to invert that. And then we'll go ahead and fill this with like a dark gray. And now it's part of the poly paint, so I can always uh, mask by uh, intensity later. Hey everybody. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, so if you, let's go through our usual rigmarole here. Let's get streaming. Uh, whoops. If you go to, so yeah, this is my uh, Tuesday. I streamed on Pixelogic's channel and you can catch up on those episodes here if you missed them. Link you to that. And then uh, of course you go to my YouTube channel here, go to playlists, and then any of the live stream full episodes or live stream highlights are going to be in here. Plus all sorts of other goodies. You can check those out. Morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, so we've got this masked out and I want to do a complex cut through here. So if I want to turn this mask into geometry for my complex cut, 
<laughs> what we can do is, okay, so it's not mask anymore, but it is a poly paint. So whenever we want to turn a poly paint into a mask, we can always go back here to masking, mask by uh, intensity, which would be color, and then mask by intensity. And now if we turn off our colorized brush here, you're going to see, okay, now we got our mask back. We can hold down control alt and tap to sharpen that mask up. And now uh, this doesn't have any poly groups on it. So I can go um, control W to make that a poly group. And now if I want to cut along that top seam line, I can, and you know, be more careful with your mask if you need to. Also, if you want to go ahead and do a slight adjustment to this mask before you apply that you can go to geometry edge loop and do edge loop mask border uh, of course you need to delete lower and now you'll get a slice line along there it'll be a little bit cleaner and this geometry is enough to support um, a little bit of a harsher transition so now what we can do is we can say i want to cut along this portion up here so i'm going to go ahead and do a quick auto groups poly groups auto groups oh you know what did we not mask all the way through? Damn it. Yeah, right through here, it gets really uh, nasty through here. So let's go ahead and, you know what? If we're going to be doing this right, first thing I'm going to do, turn off project, turn off blur. We're going to dynamesh this guy. Doesn't need to be super high res, but just enough resolution to where we can now go through here and he's going to have a slightly nicer, hold on, smooth, stronger, preferences, edit, line cursor to surface. There we go. So, let's go ahead and mask. Be a little bit more careful with this one. I'm basically looking for something that I can frame along an open border or even convert this to a polygon cap that I can then, let's hold on control, I'll tighten that up. And then now we can hit this edge loop mask border. And now we've got this poly group here. Um, let's go ahead. Ooh. Okay, we'll do this. Before I did that mask, I need to get rid of that polygroup. So what we can do is we can hit Control W, Control Shift, um, Control Shift Drag, Control W. Now we've got just two polygroups here. Uh, this polygroup looks okay. And now when we do our open border here, we can grab this one. And now when we do an auto groups, we'll have two separate meshes. And I can say, okay, on the top of this mesh, I want to frame this one with a curve. Uh, let's see, I'm going to take, I'm going to go ahead and split this one off. And now I'm going to grab a little piece of this, Control Shift A, Delete Hidden. And now we're going to, we can just run another quick cleanup on that edge. Just because if I run a curve along it, I want it to be a little bit cleaner. So we're going to go to Masking. Mask that open border. Uh, let's see, let's grow it once. Control Tab to invert that. We'll go up here to Deformation, Polish by Features, Open Circle. Okay, I think that'll work. So now we have a cap that we can put in there. A couple different ways we can cap that off. Let's try... Think, 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 think. So one thing we do, we can go to Brush, Curve, Strap, Snap. And then we can sit there, we can hold on Shift. We can snap a curve around that, and then we can cap that curve off, that geometry off. Or we can, let's try duplicating this off here. And I want to go ahead and do a Z remesher. I can freeze that border, but I want to simplify that border a little bit, so I'm not going to freeze it. Let's go half Z remesher. Everybody. Um, hey, Betram, thanks for showing up. Glad you finally caught the stream. Cool, awesome. Glad the videos are helping out. Um, oh yeah, I got a, I got a ton of videos on mouth bags. Let me link you to the one of those things while that's uh, zero meshing. Uh, so if you go to live stream highlights here and you scroll through, you know what? Let me do, let me go to my, ah, how do I get to, there used to be a playlist. 
I hate their playlist autoplay live stream highlights because then I got to link you through this thing and navigating this thing's a nightmare. Shh, be quiet, Mike. Okay. Um, so for example, mouth bags, we have uh, the mouth bag and nostrils creation here in number five. And then also if you keep scrolling down, I think I've done mouth bags several times. There's an anteater mouth bag somewhere in here as well. Yeah. Anteater zero mesh topology cleanup. And then, yeah, keep scrolling down through this, but you can at least start with uh, this one here. That'll get you your mouth bag and Siri mesher. So you have a decent head going. Okay, uh, give me a second to wrap this up. So we've got this one here, and now I should be able to at least take this edge of geometry. In fact, you know what, let's do another half. I think it'll get it a little bit simpler. Wait for it, because I'm basically closing a complex hole here. I'm going to turn on double. That's under display properties, double. And this one is going to kind of throw it off here. So I'm going to go ahead and smooth this guy out. This doesn't need to cut in. Oops. Let's go ahead and... And if it ever does get smoothed down to a single point, you can go to smooth brush modifiers, min connected to one and then you can smooth out those single points a little bit easier. Okay, so now we have a hole in his arm and I can go ahead and put a plane across this. Now, if I do any of the closed holes operations, I can try doing a convex hole, but it's probably not gonna do a very good job. We'll try a concave hole and that's the shape I get. That's not too terrible. If you want to control a little bit more, you can throw in a couple of helper bridges. So we're going to go in here. We can like bridge an edge from here to here, maybe. And then here to here. And then here to here. And then here. It's basically anywhere where there's a change in direction. I'm going to dictate how I want those to be handled. And then if you want to, you can go through here, you can do insert. I know this is kind of a roundabout way. You could all, I mean, you could just close that hole and give it extra, extract some thickness if you needed to. Um, I don't know, we'll give this a shot. We'll just kind of figure something out-ish here. And I'm also using my mouse for this because my hand's a little bit too shaky to get those little tiny edges going. Yeah, this is going to be a problem area too because it kind of goes in and then out. But we're just going to take that cap. So I don't know. We'll give it a shot. So we're going to go to, again, close concave hole. And we'll go ahead and close these areas up here. And that'll give us just a little bit more control. Now on this one, I can go ahead and control shift tap this one and invert that. And then we can, again, split hidden. And this one, when we go to Z remesh, We'll try freezing our border and then doing, sure, same. And now we've got a slightly nicer cap. Let's do half with our frozen border. All right. I think that'll work. So we've got a complex cut through here. So if we go into transparency mode with just our original guy got a complex cut through his arm. Now we need to extend this to get some thickness out of here. So I'll just go through here and I'm not going to do Q mesh. I'm going to do an extrude polygroup all. We'll pull this down a little bit. And then now we have a border. We can cut through his body a little bit more. And now if I do a subtractive mesh on this one and turn on my Boolean here, you can have a complex cut. You have to, you'll probably have to clean it up a little bit and you can do that live while you're in your move brush here. You can just go through here and move these things around and adjust that geometry now that it's simpler. Something like that maybe. And then of course on either side, you're gonna have to do the whole, um, you know, you can put a cube on one half of this thing and then, well, you would basically 
it would put a cube down the middle. In fact, let me just link you to that. So we'll go to my thing here. Instead of looking through here, I'm going to go to my channel. Let's see. Hold on. Yeah, we'll go to Pavlovich here. And let's just do a search for registration. There we go. 3D print key registration. So you can check that out, and then you can do your your blocks on either side. Cool. Um, do you use Dynamesh Master? I really don't. I if if I ever run into a situation where Dynamesh isn't getting me exactly what I want, I'll I'll crack open Dynamesh Master. But for the most part, I use Dynamesh just for base blockouts. I don't use it for anything fancier than that. So I can usually just dial in a resolution. Um, for Zvi topology, can we do something like multi-cut tool like in Maya, or can we do something for different cuts? You, that's a little bit tougher. I know what you're saying, where when you're doing, for example, like you want to do arbitrary cuts across, across a plane. So we have a plane here, edit, make polymesh 3D, and then we'll go to reconstruct and then we'll delete higher so if we wanted to just like go through here and start slicing a line through the fastest way to do that would be to use the actual slice curve now this isn't ideal but if you did want to do like an arbitrary cut through this plane you could just do that and then you but you know it's going to leave it you can't have end gons in zbrush so you'd have to go through here and do a little bit of cleanup if you want to do a quick cleanup you can go through here and you can do like a weld points crank up that weld distance that's under geometry modified topology and you can kind of whoa i guess go up to 100 and doesn't do anything well we tried so you can go through here and you can manually just go through here and you can collapse these edges here and start making decisions like okay i wanted this poly flow to go through this way so now i can start uh, cleaning this up Let's say up here, over here, and then we can go through and delete an edge. We can delete this edge, and this is uh, this is all good. I want this to cut through. If we want to clean up this poly grouping, what we can do is we can hold down Alt and start painting here, and then tap Shift, and then we can start painting these. Alternatively, you can hold down Alt, tap Shift, and then you can start painting purple. So now we have these two groups that we slice through, and it's cleaned up. Uh, we can probably simplify this one a little bit. Let's see collapse edge we can go here to here maybe and then again just delete edge here and here and here so now we have a little different flow through our object a little bit quicker the alternative to that i guess would be like going through here this is ooh, this isn't my favorite but you could be like okay i want to split here and then i split and then i split and then I split and I transition down to here and I transition down to here and then I want to split halfway down this polygon over to here but then you got to go back through <laughs> and bridge two points there might be a better way to do this I tend to use just um, so, oh yeah we're gonna cut through here so we'll transition down maybe this way and then split over or we'll split halfway down this way yeah this is not my preferred method obviously and then you'd have to clean all that garbage up so slicing is probably my preferred method and then past this point you could go through here if you need to you can also slide so you can uh, take any of these and you can slide them along their axis on their whatever you need to do there uh, Mark asks would you mind saying what headset you have in particular the mic is a built-in one or clip-on um, yeah, let me find out. Uh, let's see. Because I'm not sure right off the top of my head. I think these are discontinued. Uh, if you go to my hardware on my YouTube channel, let's go to the Herman Miller IKEA. Uh, where are we at? Rush. Okay, these are the Bayer Dynamic MMX300 PC Gaming Premium Digital Headset with uh, built-in microphone. Um, they're expensive, but they're good. Uh, I don't, they don't sell them anymore, but I'm sure they have a version from that same company or something similar to that. 
is pretty decent. I have had to turn on gain. I was getting some issues with, I guess, OBS or streaming where the sound wasn't loud enough, so I do have a filter on my mic that has a little bit of gain on it. But other than that, they're pretty robust and they're pretty comfortable too. They got nice padding around them. Cool, thanks for stopping by, everybody. Oh yeah, and also on the Pixelogic stream, there's a couple mouth bags on there. Does your custom menu ever disappear, become sparse and buggy? Um, it doesn't, but I have heard that before from some people. And uh, so here's my custom menu here. The only time things get a little bit weird for some reason, I, I want to say something I had in here with Dynamesh. Let me see. ZBrush, Dynamesh, whenever, oh, Polish. Whenever I had Polish put in here, it would turn into a Polish slider sometimes. And then it would throw off my menu. It wasn't a huge deal, but I just took Polish out of there. And then another thing, well, one thing to be aware of is when you have your custom menu, if it's it's context sensitive, so if you can see up here my Z-Sphere area is empty uh, because I don't have anything relative to Z-Sphere here. If I do, if I switch over to like a ZBrush primitive, so I'm on Cube 3D and it's not, I don't hit make poly mesh 3D, it's going to start looking weird. It's like, oh, where did all my stuff go? Well, it's because you can't do any of that stuff with a primitive. You can hit make poly mesh 3D and now you can see that. And then you can also grab a Z-Sphere. And now everything's kind of weird, but then you got your Z-Sphere up here. So that might be it, if that's not it. I mean, I'm not saying ZBrush is bug-free, but that, that could be part of the problem is the context-sensitive is going to make things not show up. Uh, we're going to find a video with key shot smoothing groups, um, 3D Studio Max, analog. I'm sure you showed it before. So key shot smoothing groups. Oh. Yeah, we can do that real quick. So we're gonna take, uh, let's take something simple in there and we'll talk about that. So we're gonna switch. We can just we can just do that really quick. I think I talk about it in the, ooh, the thread wrapper, uh, the mug, the mug I did. <laughs> let's, let's just model something really fast, uh, it'll be easy. So, okay, cylinder 3D, go into edit mode. And you, you want, here's one thing we can talk about. So when we make polymesh 3D, and then we say go into poly groups and then we'll group by normals and then we'll go ahead and say eh, you know what let's go ahead and delete that top i want a rounded top on this thing and you're going to go through here then you're going to go to close convex hole and you try and close this thing it's like i can add more geometry but i can't round it off um i i don't know what the exact number is but as soon as you get around 32 it's going to stop being available to you for whatever reason so if you're going to try that what I tend to do is I'll just go into my custom menu here and I have uh, cylinders for 8, 12, 16, and 32. I'll just grab like a cylinder 12 and then I'll go ahead and spoo -doo -doo. let's go ahead and hide point and then we'll delete hidden. So on this one, let's grab this top piece here, control shift, invert, delete hidden, and then we can close, uh, wow, close convex hole and now it'll actually work. And then for this one, we can again grab it, invert, delete, and now I'm going to do Q mesh all polygons. So we've got something modeled in here. And let's go ahead and turn on. So we'll, we'll do a couple things. So we're going to do a crease tolerance under your geometry crease menu, and we'll hit dynamic. And we'll go ahead and, oh, we don't even need to apply that. We'll just throw it in the key shot. So we're going to render, external render a key shot. We'll throw that in. And it's probably a little off. I had to adjust some things on my monitor here. So let's make sure you guys can see that. Something like this. That'll work. So we have an object in here. And of course, this was a cool thing that you can use. I like that lens coded. Um, but another thing you can do is you can go in here to your materials. And let's say we want to throw on a glass material. It's like, oh, wow, that glass looks terrible. This, this geometry is really, so instead of going back into ZBrush, what I can do is I can go into our scene, make sure our model selected here, right click it and go to edit geometry. And then in here, it's going to be edit normals. And then we're going to say calculate the vertex normals and then apply. And that's going to go ahead and give you smooth normals along anything that had that 45 degree angle threshold. So now we got smoother glass. So we can go in here to our lighting and we can say, turn on jewelry and that'll give us that caustics. But you can also see, wow, this corner, this edge right here, let's go back to product, is uh, really, really sharp. So that's where I would go to click the um, object here 
and go back to scene object and scroll down here and you see rounded edges change that radius and just give yourself a little bit of breathing room on those edges that showing up okay that's still really it's doing some interesting stuff on there but at least that'll kind of round out those um, top edges here so you can it's not quite as harsh of a transition let's see is this glass solid better let's uh let me see glass solid let's change that hmm now I'll play with that. But anyway, so rounded edges is your friend, and then also smooth normals is your friend. I wonder if the rounded edges in conjunction with the smooth normals is doing something weird. But something like that will help out your soft, smooth renders. Um... Let's see, Mark says, I will jump over on YouTube. I see you're posting glance on there as they aren't showing on Twitch. What is going on with Twitch? Give me a second. Twitch, pav mic. I should be streaming on Twitch. So I have Restream uh, doing my chat for me. So I'm getting both YouTube and Twitch. But, and I am, okay, so these links are posting on here. Okay, okay. I think everything's working okay. Uh, what is the difference in there between the move brush and move topological? So this one is a good one. So if we say, uh, let's go ahead and just drag out a copy of this. So we got these two here and I'm going to do a quick auto groups. Uh, group right normal, auto groups, there we go. So we got two objects in here and I just want to move one of them. But if I use my move brush, I'm going to grab both. So you're going to go down here to the auto masking and you're going to say topological and now this vert is not vert welded to this other one so the first object you touch it's going to move like so you can also change that range if you're doing like lips you can turn that range down and that'll just grab the top part of an object here so if you go into our comma key you know what i hate i hate zbrush projects I don't, I just want the head. I don't want to load up all their stupid settings. So topological range, and then you can go through here and you can just like grab an upper lip and a lower lip as opposed to having that off like that. So in fact, I don't even use, so you can go BM T move topological and turn that on, or you can sign a hotkey to it. Really, I always have my brush menu open anyway. So if I just need to use topological every once in a while, I'll just do that. Um, of course, since I had opened a new ZBrush project, I can't go back to the other thing I was working on. But for example, we have this. Um, I also will tend to use not topological but masked by polygroups up to 100. Then now any polygroup that you touch first, you'll go ahead and move separately as long as they're not vert welded. So that's also something you can give a shot. And that's global too for any of your brushes. <laughs> cool. Um, what determines how a nano mesh is aligned when drawn out? I understand you can change alignment. That's a good question because I've, and in fact, we're going to do a little bit of nano mesh today. Let's see if we can't figure that out. Remind me. Uh, Pro 4210 asked me that. Uh, how do you zero mesh a slightly asymmetrical mess? Like if you have a head and only the ears are asymmetrical and you want the rest of the head to be zero mesh symmetry, but you don't want to split those ears off. Ooh. I don't know if that's possible. What I would do, what I would do, is I grab our head here, and let's make sure she's symmetrical. And then it's like, okay, these ears, I want to be different. So I'm going to say select lasso, and uh, how are we going to do this? Let's go here, and then here. There's not a real clean line around that, but I'm going to hit make a polygon for that. So my face is symmetrical here. But my ears, ears are asymmetrical. So my ears are asymmetrical. She's going to be half. Um, let's see, turn off X. I'm going to move AQ. She's going to be half Vulcan. Or Romulan. Or Elf. And 
let's see. So we got this, but we want to Z remesh it, but we want the ears. We want the geometry to be symmetrical. Man. That's a tough one, because I think you would have to split it out. You could Z remesh this symmetrically, and then Z remesh these. You could freeze borders to make sure your verts always matched up. It's going to get a little bit weird around here, probably. But then, or if you didn't do that, you'd have to manually go through here and sew these up because you're going to have two separate zero mesh meshes. I don't know a way around doing like a mostly, like if I have X turned on, even if I, well, let's see. I don't know. Let's try it. Let's see if we do a poly auto groups here. So if we have this one separate, so we got these two, I'm going to put these in the same. No, that's not going to work. But we can still freeze that border. Um, we can do subtool, duplicate. And we're going to zero mesh. I guess I don't have those options available to me in there. So we'll do zero mesher, freeze our border. Or we can do freeze groups. Let's freeze border, keep groups. We'll smooth, keep the smooth groups up. We'll do half. And we have X turned on, which is probably going to overwrite the negative to the positive. So that one, that ear is probably going to go. No, it didn't. And, but that's also not symmetrical. Okay, so X turned on, Z remesher, and then it will be symmetrical. We can't kill that symmetry. Now, what if we mask that? No, it'll kill your masks. Yeah, I guess you'd have to split that out. And then do, let's just turn all that off. So this one, we want to be symmetrical. <sighs> but then that ear is going to come over here. You have to delete that ear and then merge this ear together. Hmm, that's a good one. Somebody might have a more elegant answer than my fumbling around. I'm not sure about that. Uh, the materials do get exported when you bridge the key shot. Cool, cool, cool. Yes, yes. Uh, Dynamesh Master can remove painful intersecting surfaces most of the time. Yeah, any sort of Dynamesh is going to create that envelope and get rid of those really deep cuts. Uh, do you think Zebra Mesh can be a good substitute of manual retopology? A waste of time. I use it all the time. I hate manual retopologization. So, in fact, we're working hard on other tools to make sure that we never have to do game reses again. Because that's the waste of time. Uh, I'm not sure what rendering image key shot. I guess their own. Cool. Yes, I'm doing good. Thanks for showing up. Do you think you'll do a scale session, i.e. how ZBrush treats real-world scale or printing and prototyping? I don't do a lot of that, but let me give you some good resources for that because that is a really weird thing. Um, So if you go to, like I just did an Ask ZBrush scale. So they got, how do I unify without affecting the scale of the model? Multiple scaling, multiple tools, export scale slider. So all of these things talk about the scale. And there's also, let me see if he has a scale. When it comes to scale and 3D printing, I think Joseph Drust is the guy to ask about that one. How can I correctly size imported scan data? So all of these here. I'll link you guys to these. So uh, this is probably, this is an interesting one. So basically goes through and he sets an object between the eyes that he knows the distance of, and then he does a scale between those two distances. So for like, there's a scan date of his head. So this will be a good one. You guys watch this one. I have notes on this, but since I don't do it very often, I, 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 I would just fumble around. Um, here's also the scale master plugin. And that's just, I think it ships with ZBrush. You don't have to download this. So you can go to Z plugin over here and go down here to Scale Master. And there's lots of cool stuff you can do in here. Again, I'm not an expert at that. So um, I might for my channel, <laughs> basically I would watch Joseph Dress videos, take some notes and then make my own video. I, I don't know how useful that'll be. He does a pretty good job. So he does an excellent job. So I don't know how if I'll get around to that, but those will be some really good resources. 
Okay, so um, thanks for trying it. How could you combine the mesh again after splitting the ear without DynaMesh again? Okay, so let's try that. That'll be a good test. So let's say we did... Okay, did we... Okay, we'll do Z remesh. Keep groups on. Let's go down here to our real settings here. So Z remesh. I don't use those settings a whole lot, so I just strip some of them out in my custom menu. So we'll do Z remesher. Freeze border half. But that's not going to freeze up border, and we want to do X symmetry. Okay, you know what? We'll figure it out. So we'll go ahead and do that one, and then we'll take this one, and then we'll say half. Now this border isn't going to change. Um, oh, we'll turn off the X symmetry. Okay, so we use Z remeshed two models, and now they have not, um, not a good geometry between the two. So what I'm going to do, let's see, floor is off. Let's turn off. Let's turn on transparency here. So on this ear here, I can go ahead and say this geo on the head, just on this side, I want to get rid of. Now this is, you can still have symmetry on a head, even if it's not, even if it's asymmetrical, as long as it's down the world axis. That's an easy one. Um, you can do local symmetry as well, uh, or posable symmetry. That gets a little bit trickier. Uh, but we'll go ahead and hit Control W on this one. So now these holes should semi-line up. We can just clean this up in a second. So I'm going to delete hidden. And now we have two open border edges. Oh, you know what we could try? Let's try this. So we have a polygroup there. I've got an ear here. Let's try this. So we got an open hole. Just one hole, right? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to do B, create insert mesh, new. And then I've got a head here with a polygroup. So if we use mesh, oh, we need to get that. Okay, let's do this. So you're going to see I have um, a buried, buried polygroups in here. I'm going to do a quick auto groups. And now I'm going to grab this one, this one, this one. Control W. Now it's all one polygroup. So again, brush, insert, grab that ear that we have. Now, since this is a polygroup here, we can drag on that polygroup with our open hole, and then we can reposition this ear like so. Put that into where it should be using our gizmo. And then control drag, control drag again, and then mesh fusion. We'll go ahead and sew up that border, you can go through here and smooth that out a little bit. So that'll get rid of that manual work you have to do. So we have an ear attached. One way to do it, or you could just manually delete. Let's see. The manual way to do this is a little bit crappier, I guess. So we'll take this one, delete hidden, and then we would merge these two together. And then you would just manually go through here. We can do, we can try doing a weld. Uh, this gets a little bit dirty. And you can try doing like a stitch two points. You can stitch this point. Whoa. Okay, so if you're going to accidentally touch things like me, Q mesh, uh, do nothing. And then edge, do nothing. And now only your points, point operations will work. So you can stitch these points together and then stitch these points together here to here. And you just go through this and you can you can merge you can collapse you can do it, it's not fun you can just basically go th go around this ear and stitch this together you might have to use your mouse because boy i'm doing a terrible job so I'll this point to this point and then this point to this point Ugh. so something like that again there might be a better way to do it i just not sure what it is I uh, only have Maya 2014, but the most recent version disc continued support for Gozi to Maya. Oh, man. Um, Gozi to Maya doesn't work anymore. What? Yeah, Gozi's nice. You could, uh, I for all my exporting purposes, I'll do, uh, I think Gozi does the same thing with that bridge. But the FBX export, if you have multiple subtools, it'll keep your subtools, your vertex color, your creasing. All of that information, uh, creasing, I think, maybe not creasing. Poly groups, maybe. Um, FBX pretty robust. So if you do an XBX, FBX exporter, it's a little bit slower to go back and forth, and you will lose subdivision history. Ooh, I don't have a good, I don't have a solution for that one. Sorry about that, Pro. 
Uh, I have a video series of making camera as meshes using zero mesher with zero mesher guys polygroup separation. Yeah, for sure. We've done. Let me go back to my channel here. So I'm trying to think if I have so on my playlists. Oh well, on my reptile creature series, uh, that's on Gumroad, but you can check that out. That has I go through and I do a real game res. I'll do start with zero mesh and then clean that up. Um, if you just want a quick zero mesh and clean up, go to my live stream highlights, and even all the way down to the very bottom, I've done it a couple times. Where, or you know what? Let's make this even easier. We've got my videos here. Let's search for topology. So we've got uh, topology, brush, uh, face topology, and then zero mesh, Z sphere topology, and cleanup. So basically, you zero mesh, append that to a Z sphere, and then clean that up using Z spheres, and then make an adaptive skin. So yeah, there, there's a there's a couple different versions of that in here. So I'll, I'll send you that one. It's for an anteater, but it's same idea. Let me see, copy link address and check that out. Oh, uh, can you answer my question on the ID map as a mess that I created? Right. Let me see. What was the ID one? Created an ID for texturing from masking on my model, extracted it, and exported it to 3DCO Max, giving it a material color. <gasps> then attached it to my model to bake the ID from. So when I'm doing ID color, um, I don't... ID for texturing from masking on my model, extracting it. I don't do masking and extraction for my material IDs. I usually use my vertex color, but you can mask and extract and do it by material or subtool. Um, what I usually do is, for example, sci-fi pistol series is probably a good one. I do it in my own the live stream highlights as well, but I'll send you this one for, for anybody who's interested. If you go down through here towards the end, before we go into Painter and doing our auto game res, we do a high res export, and then this one I'll just do a color fill. So I use I usually use the vertex color for my material IDs and bake that to a texture later. So there's not any extraction or anything like that. But if you did need a separate object, it depends on the object you're making. But usually material IDs, I'll just do vertex color. Uh, how to do paneling and fusion? So some crazy cool sci-fi guns made in fusion. I was curious. Um, I can give it a shot. It's been a while since I've been in there. Let me see if it's still... Usually when I load up Fusion, it's like, well, we need to... Uh, we need to update. Work around for the GoZ 3D Studio Max workflow. It's kind of buggy now. Open this new session 3D Studio Max to go to GoZ. Ugh. I can put in a request for that one. I don't use 3D Studio Max, or I haven't in about a dozen years. I don't even really use Maya anymore. <laughs> Trying to transition over to Blender. Oh, uh, my term has expired. Well, let's see if it'll let me use it anyways. So, we'll do a sketch. We'll do a, let's do a new sketch. Okay, create a sketch. And we'll do it on this bottom plane here. And in this sketch, we can go into our sketch properties here. We'll just do a rectangle. And then on this rectangle, we'll do a line. And we can cut through, or you know what, we can just do a rectangle first. Let's do a sketch circle just to give some visual interest here. Center diameter. Okay, so stop our sketch, and then we're going to press pull this thing up. Now, if we wanted to say slice through here, um, well, first let's go through here. Let's say, I'm gonna grab these two edges, and we'll do a a fillet. Okay. So if I want to slice through these things, you could do another object that'll slice through. We can also just do another sketch. Or we can append that other sketch, but we'll do it. Create a sketch and we'll do it on this top plane here. And through this top plane, we will do a line. And then from this line, we can go to modify, and we want to do a split body. So I'm going to select body to split, select, splitting tool, selected, and then we can say okay. 
And so now we split this off. Jeez, how do I navigate? Come on, Mike. Uh, zoom, rotate. There we go. Now I remember things. And now on this thing here, now we have two separate bodies in here. So if we go to our bodies, we have body one, body two. Um, so now you can do whatever you want through here. So let's say if we want to just do a, a chamfer. Let's go modify. You can tell I don't really come in here that often anymore. I'm going to like chamfer this panel here. Oof. Let's do like one millimeter. There we go. We'll turn that other body on. And then on this body here, let's say we want to do a fillet. Here, here. You know what? Let's turn that other body off. OK. So now we've got panel lines, cut through, split body. There's a million ways to do things in this program. I'm not really an expert in this anymore, but let's say we want to take this into ZBrush. So what we can do, or you know what, let's add a couple more things to here. So we'll go to create a, let's say create a cylinder on this surface here. And we want to add these things together, we'll join it. And then through here, we'll do another fillet and we'll soften this transition out. Maybe, there we go. Just a little bit, just a little bit. And then on top of here, um, let's do create another cylinder on this plane here. We'll snap it right to the middle and we'll say OK. And we're going to push this one in. And then through here, we can run a fillet on the outside. OK, so we've got a shape here and we want to go to, we'll go up here to our bodies. Now we'll go to the very top. And we'll do save as STL. Maybe. Should pop up a little window. Let me see bodies. We should be able to export. Save this as STL. We save this as STL. We should be able to save this as STL. I wonder if it's because my term has expired. It's not letting me save. Let's try this. Hmm. Yeah, it's not letting me. So maybe that's why. But you could save this as STL and bring it into ZBrush pretty easily. There's also a way to get OBJs out of here. I don't remember how to do it. But something like that. Uh, curve bridge, yeah, you could do the curve bridge to close those open holes if long as you have two open holes there. Uh, how can I make a mask that I created to be using substance for creating my ID map and give it its own texture? Um, I would convert that, like if I wanted to have a material ID for some reason right here. Um, you would hit Control W to make it a poly group, and then that poly group, when you go to export, I mean, usually what I would do is I would go, okay, so I've got a head here. I'm going to take this head, and I'm going to go do a color fill on that one. I'm going to take this one, and we're going to do a color fill of blue. I'm going to take this one, I'm going to do a color fill of green. And now I have material IDs that I can take into Painter. Um, that's, that would be how I would do it. And then these these vertex colors would be converted to a texture map, which would be your material ID. Uh, it's, as opposed to like trying to get a, just a mask out of ZBrush. I want to say that'd be a tougher one. You could also assign a separate, if, a separate material in here. So you can mask that off and invert that. And then you can go through here and say, take a reflection two, and then go cut with M on color fill object. And then if we go back to basic material here, these polygons right here will be, you can say, uh, base my material, bake my material ID based on my material assignment. That would be another way to do it. Uh, ZBrush take more time to open load when we have Gozi and Keyshot Bridge on. Not, not to my knowledge. I'm not sure. I don't I haven't done any tests, but I don't think it does. 
Uh, regarding the ear thing, on Andre, Andre it says uh, maybe a VDM dragged over the zero meshed area to extrude a different ear. Yeah, if you had enough polygons to support that different ear, um, you definitely could. But yeah, the zero mesh across an axis is a tough one. Uh, yeah, for the pistol design, just uh, this this would be my preferred method. So just watch uh, the pistol series on my channel. Do you use a default shortcut mapping in Blender. What do you think of the UX in general? Um, I haven't used it a lot. I'm trying to catch up on Master uh, Jerry Perkins uh, hard ops tools and stuff, and I always I start using it, and then I have to I get distracted. So one day, one day I will be in Blender. But today is not that day. It's going to be a long time, probably a while. Uh, thoughts on VR Oculus Medium? Um, I wish it was more widely adopted. Right now, I don't really. I have an HTC Vive at home. I haven't set it up yet, just because I don't know. I could go in there and sculpt, I guess. But if the end result isn't seen in VR, because nobody has a VR headset, or the people who do are just early adopters and hobbyists. Um, there's not really an audience for it. And it's interesting. I've gone in there and I've, uh, you know, gone in and be like, oh, I can sculpt. It's painful and it's okay. If, if I was making a VR game and I could go in and make stuff and the end result was a VR experience, I would see a lot more use for that. Um, but if you're going and sculpting in VR and the end experience is a little screen in YouTube, you can rotate around or a Sketchfab model, it's a waste of my time. It's interesting, but in, in, I could get some techniques going and VR and sculpts, but I don't see a real use for it now just because the end result, I'm never going to view it in VR or my audience will never view it in VR or they won't for a while because mass adoption of VR hasn't happened yet. So, or maybe never will happen. Eh, it'll happen eventually, but it'll probably be when we implant a chip into our brain at this point. Um, let's see, it doesn't store mass that way. Polygraphs we read as material ID is a good way to store any selections you may have. Yeah, so that's another thing. If you don't want to bake a vertex color, let's say Control W. Actually, let's go back to just something here. So if you wanted these parts to be a different material ID, um, give a new polygroup and then new polygroup. And then that's another option for us. Make this more obvious. Have those read in as material IDs. When we export an OBJ, only one subtool gets exported. Uh, that's just a function of exporting OBJs. So if you want to export all your OBJs, you can do the FBX export, and then it'll export an FBX with all these plugged in, and then you can actually bake per name. We go over that in the and this as well, when we go to export, we export an FBX with all these name labeled underscore high. And then when we bake in Painter, we go, hey, just look at the underscore high and bake those together so you don't get normal transfers and errors across the different objects. And if you're animating objects, keeping the um, AO not baked in on other objects as well is good. Uh, also, you can go to Z plugin, Subtool Master, and we can go to export and then you can do uh if you use, use subtool master export it'll export all these now it's not going to export it as one file it's going to export it as um a bunch of different obj's in a folder you point to uh, but then if you want to export everything together you can just go down here to merge visible and then you can export this merged as an obj and it'll export an obj with different polygroups depending on your import settings those could be separate objects when you import them Uh, Alex says, uh, could I share with you an image to explain a question just for future reference? Yeah, I don't, uh, I'm trying to think. If, if, if Nightbot will let you post a link to that image, give it a shot. Sometimes it can be a little bit touchy. All righty. I'm going to take five seconds and go get a drink of water. Be right back. Huh. 
Huh, okay, yeah, if it's not gonna let you... <laughs> oh boy, yeah, thanks Nightbot. Um, in, in lieu of me trying to figure out my Nightbox settings, go to... Let me link you to this. Uh, come on. There we go. You can drop me a message here. See if that'll work. No, I agree. A thousand speaks, or uh, image speaks a thousand words. Uh, now, this may shock and astound everybody, but I do actually have something I need to work on, and you guys need to help me with it. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and kill ZBrush completely. And we're going to do... Load that back up. Sorry about the blinding white there. There we go. And please remember where I had my screen. That would be great. Okay, do you guys need the file menu? Yeah, we do. We'll clip the bottom a little bit. Okay, so uh, what I need to do is make a book. So we are going to talk about that nano mesh to see if we can orient our nano mesh in a certain way and figure that out. Hey, good morning to yourself. Thanks for showing up. Um, can we use PolyPaint to export Substance Painter and do the texturing without doing UVs in Maya? You can go into Substance Painter without doing UVs at all. Uh, well, no, you do need UVs. You can do auto UVs. You do need some UVs on there. You don't have to make a normal map if you don't want to, but you have to have uh, UVs on your model. So you use UV Master, or you can even go to the UV tools in there. Okay, so um, we need to make something like this. A book that is like an ancient evil tome. And in order to do that, we're going to utilize nano mesh. So we'll figure out this whole nano mesh orientation thing, maybe. So, for example, this will be a good one. So we're going to do an arrow, edit, make poly mesh 3D. Let's see if we can figure this nano mesh thing out. <clears throat> so, we have our floor turned on, and right now, let's move this to let's try Z forward first. So Z forward across the X axis is how this object is oriented, and it's just sitting out in space. So if I go to a plane and we go to and the reason I'm doing it this way as opposed to making a brush first is just I want to see how it natively grabs an, ob an arbitrary object from a ground plane and makes that into an animesh. So we're going to go here to uh, make polymesh 3D and then we will reconstruct subdivisions delete higher and now we're going to go in here we're going to go to insert nano mesh all polygons, and we're going to hit M, and we're going to grab that arrow 3D we're playing. So this was Z forward, and they're orienting all over the place. So let's see if we can't, and that's also on the side, so it looks like it's going from the down arrow. Now, the the really the vertical orientation is all I'm worried about. So if we go to Modify Topology, and then we do um, Align Edge. Okay, so now they're all going in the same direction, and it's on its side. So let's do another test. Polymesh 3D, arrow, floor. So we did Z forward. Let's do Y up now. Go back to our polyplane we were working with. And then on our um, insert nano mesh, we'll hit M and we'll just re grab that polymesh 3D. And now when we pull it out, it's still on its side. Hmm. Okay, is that based on, if I have my Polymesh 3D here, and we open up our display, where is that at? Visibility, no. Preview. So if we change our preview here to be stored this way, and then we go back to our Polymesh 3D, and then we hit M, 
and just to play it safe, just to play it safe, you know what, I probably should have dumped that as well. Okay, so it's based off of your preview, possibly. I did a bad test. Okay, I really want to get the bottom of this, so I'm going to, bear with me, sorry, this is going to be really boring. Preview could work, or I could have just not dumped that object out of memory first, maybe, because if it's just reading the name. How come it's not remember, remembering my window position anymore? It used to be so good at that. Okay, uh, I'll do this one more time. So we have an Arrow 3D here. Ah. Edit, make polymesh 3D, and now we have a polyplane here. Make polymesh 3D, geometry, <coughs> reconstruct, make it a little bit simpler, delete higher, and just for ease of use, I'm going to go to modify topology, and we're going to do an align edge. You can do on the nanomesh properties like you were saying, you can change the nanomesh properties to compensate for that. Uh, but now if we go into our Z modeler brush, we can say arrow 3D, again, insert nano mesh, all polygons, and it's on its side. Now if we go back here and we look at the floor orientation and we're Y up, Z forward shouldn't make a difference at all. That should be, who cares? So it's going to be, I have changed that. I'm gonna to go to here. And instead of that, we're gonna switch out to a ring. Okay. And then we'll go to a arrow. And now it's coming out. So, okay. Looks like floor orientation is it. You just have to dump the arrow first before you grab another one. So it's not necessarily the uh, preview. So if you want it to come out from the surface, make sure it's Z forward. It's looking like, does that make sense? And then from here, you go into your nanomesh properties. Maybe. <laughs> uh, how would you go about creating ornamental detail like Victorian flower patterns or Gothic ones? Um, probably with insert meshes. We went over engraving. Let's talk a little bit about engraving um, on a sphere. Edit, make polymesh 3D. So if I want like an engraving brush, what I would do is I would take a poly star, go to initialize Q cube, and then I would rotate this thing like so. And, you know, feel free to modify this however you want. I'm just going to keep it simple and we'll go ahead and stretch this out and then insert, uh, no, bevel, edge loop complete. Make these about three equal parts. Polygroup, polygroup. So now I have three parts here. Brush, create insert mesh, new stroke curve. Um, D -d -d -d, I think this will work fine. And then intensity size fall off here. Actually, size is probably what we want, not intensity. So now we can go thick to thin, and then under modifiers, we need to make sure we weld point, stretch, curve res up a little bit. I don't think we need to stretch, but just in case, I forget. So now we have a brush here that we can then take back to our sphere, and then we can draw this on. And then as we're drawing that on, we can change the depth so it cuts through our mesh. And then we can go ahead and split mass points. And then underneath here, you could say we want to make this subtractive. So with our live boolean here, we can go through here and start cutting through our mesh. Uh, we probably want to turn snap on. Snap is on. Doesn't want to snap. I wonder, oh, it has to be on the object, I guess. Let's see. Okay, so stay, well, no. Stay on your object if you wanted to snap to your object. And this could just be ornamentation. So you could just go through here and just keep adding these things. And then if I had leaves that I want to add, let's see if we have like brush insert. Hmm. Let's pretend that do we have anything organic? Hold on. We got to have something. Brush, uh, insert IMM, we have rocks. Hmm. Let's do dragon bones. So let's say this right here is a leaf. You could just go through here and then start adding leaves. 
Um, or you can make your own cluster of leaves. So we've got this one. And then we can hit W and steal that. Let's go ahead and unify that. So then we want to do a cluster of leaves here. Or a flower. Uh, if we wanted a flower, what we could use is we can go over here to Array Mesh. Array Mesh, Repeat, and then let's do a Rotate. Say 360. And then let's set that pivot. I'm going to hit W and then Y to go into our transpose. We'll say use transpose, lock size, lost position. And then we'll grab this little middle ring here. So we can go ahead and make a quick flower. And of course you can you know, do any array mesh stuff you want to do. And let's say we want to make that mesh. And now we got B, create insert mesh new. And then go back to our working file here. And now you can just go, and now we got flowers, like so. Uh, so you can cut in with your engraving, you can cut out. You could also use the chisel brush, but I prefer to have the flexibility of a real mesh sitting out there, like so. We can tap off that curve here. Um, probably that would be my first approach, just for ease. And if you want to just make say alpha or height maps you can do a plain 3d here and then make polymers 3d hit brush go back to our engraving brush and you can go through here and you can hit six a couple times if you want to smooth that line out you can go through here and create you know different sizes um, different widths if you want this one to bump out more when you drag it on uh, the Z intensity is already maxed out. If you want to make it thinner, you can drop that Z intensity down, and that'll make it flatter. If you want to go past that 100 point, you're going to have to go into modifiers and do a strength multiplier. So we'll do like 2x, and now it'll bump out twice. So once you have all that, you could say, get rid of this plane. Let's go ahead and split hidden. And we can hit D. And if you want to, you can also do a, just a crease, and then we can do like a crease level of two, smooth so div of three, so we get creasing on here. Um, if we want to crease this one here, this one when it got flattened, you could build the crease into the brush if you need to. I'm just going to go through here and do a crease edge loop complete real quick. There we go. So something like this. So we can get rid of that plane, and then you can make your document a square size if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and just drop that to my canvas here. And then we'll grab a MRGBZ grabber, drag this out. Oops, let's do that again. Okay, so we have our depth grab here. And now we can grab any, and you can see this whiter one is, is, uh, oops, is the higher version. Is it control N? So the one that uh, has a higher value is because this one's so much higher than the other one, so it's going to bump out more. So now if we go back to our sphere, make polymesh 3D, divide this thing up, and then go into our standard brush. We'll clone this off. We'll go into a drag rect alpha, grab our depth grab that we made, local shift down to negative 100. And now as we drag out these alphas, or you can hold down alt and you can engrave them in. Um, you can also, if you need a little bit more control than that, go to BT, transpose smart mask, put that alpha in there. And now when you hold down control and drag this out, you can actually rotate and squish your mask. So you can kind of just position this and drop it, invert that, and then you can just inflate through that mask if you need to, or deflate. Something like that. Oh, damn it, I'm not recording. So I'm going to have to see if I can get this off YouTube. Um, really? Everybody should be able to message me here. This is my business uh, thing. Let me see if it went through. Cool, use uh, Medium for VR stuff. Cool, I'll have to g I'll give uh, Medium a shot next time I'm in there. Uh, and I should set it up, it's not that I don't want to, it's just time. Um, kind of create a complex curve shape. 
a complex curve shape in ZModeler. Yeah, there's a couple different ways. Um, probably the... Uh, kind of depends on the curve shape you want to make. Yes, that is possible. Um, and if it's just like lofting along a curve, you can do that as well. Is there a new way of making straight lines? Uh, yeah, so on this one, uh, Zebra's 4 or 8, when you're making a straight line and you hold down Shift, uh, it's going to pop this little line out behind it. So as you're holding down Shift, you can snap to different degrees and make a straight line. If you don't like that, just turn tap L, which is going to turn your lazy mouse off. And now when you hold down Shift, it'll be camera-based. So now you can just hold down Shift and it'll snap like this. Um, another cool thing is you can hit this transpose line. If, you don't, if you're not in gizmo mode, you can go to transpose and you can dictate what angle you want. And then, so you can just like say, okay, I want to go from, hold on. I got a little spot here and I want to connect these two arbitrary points. So I want to grab uh, this angle of my camera here and then I can hold down control and tap that white line and that'll snap your camera to that view. And then you can just hold down shift and go across there. I use that all the time. So that functionality still exists. Cool. Alrighty. So um, let's start our book. So now that we know how Nanomesh works, so I keep restarting ZBrush. I just want a clean version of ZBrush. You can do initialize, but I also like blinding you guys with this white ZBrush startup. Oh, I didn't do it that time. It's still not remembering. Okay. Let's see if I like actually change the size of the window. If it'll remember. Hold on. Camtasia recorder. This allows me to kind of set window size. And now maybe it'll remember my window size. We're, I'm learning all sorts of new ZBrush stuff today. So for our book, for our ancient tome, we're going to start with NanoMesh, I think. So let's try just starting with a plane here. Edit, make PolyMesh 3D. And we're going to go to Geometry. And we will go to Reconstruct all the way down to a flat plane, let's say. Let's give this a shot. Uh, so now we need pages of this book. We can use the default cube, but I need something simpler than that. So we're going to go to... That uh, doesn't really matter. Do an arrow 3D, make poly mesh 3D, and then we can change that. We can actually change that when we go to edit our mesh as well. Uh, we'll keep it simple. So Q cube, and we'll do a resolution of 1, 1, 1. There we go. So hit control W, I don't need those poly groups. And now we're gonna go back in. If you needed to, you could go like brush, create insert mesh, new. And then from the brush create, you could do create um, nano mesh brush from that insert mesh brush. And now you're ready to go. It's kind of up to you. So now that we have that cube on here, uh, we can insert that nano mesh on our cube. And let's play around with these settings a little bit. I have a feeling to get these things to cross over, I might have to cut some more edges in here, but we'll see. So let's go to NanoMesh, and we're going to say rotate, Z rotation is zero. These are pages of a book. And then the width, um, I can keep here. I'm going to keep it proportional. I don't want to fit because I want to kind of overstep these bounds a little bit. And then the length, we can change. So now with all these, I want to H tile, nope, V tile, yes. Now if I V tile, that might not give me enough, let's see, pattern, the grid pattern. I don't think I need to do a pattern, I think I just need to do a V tile. So now that we have that, we can change our length and height. So now that we have those settings, we could go through here and then change these variances so we get a little bit more better clumping and height variances. But now, since I'm doing the V-tile, yeah, even fill. So let's do a fill of one here. Okay, so we can kind of overshoot. But I can't overlap them, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, I can. Hmm. 
So that'll that can kind of start being the pages of a book. Uh, if I don't want to change the, we'll change that width variance down to zero. So now this is going to fit within our book. So if our book is this way, and now we've got these clumped together pages. Some of those are really, really thin. Yeah, I guess we could use that uh, for the side of our book. If we need a little bit more control, I'm going to turn off uh, Nanomesh. And on this one here, let's try insert multiple edge loops. I mean, you could just extrude these things out, but I like having the variance option. So we'll hit Control W, and we'll just do an uncrease all. I don't think that'll make a difference. And then again, we're going to Uh, spacebar, insert nano mesh. We have our object here, and then we're going to do it on all polygons. And our rotations are zeroed out. So now let's say we're just going to scale these up. So let's say width, length. There we go. So we can height. I don't really don't care about. So these variances in here. So we can change the clump width and then the height variance. So from the side, it'll be kind of randomish. And then also, let's see, as soon as I do this tile, though, it's going to want to... Let's do two. And let's do three. Okay, I suppose that'll work. Now I also wonder if we go into Edit Mesh, let's make this all one polygroup. I'm going to slide this edge and this edge so that they kind of taper a little bit. Let's make that a little bit more extreme. Yeah, not that extreme. So mask this, and then we'll just pop that out. So, and you can feel free to edit your mesh all you want in there. That's actually a really cool option. And for this side here, if we're just seeing this view, let's go ahead and change that length variance as well, just a tiny bit. Okay, so we've got our pages of our book. Inventory, uh, one to mesh. We can get rid of this sheet here. Delete hidden. And now we can take these points here, stretch them out, and now we've got kind of a, a book going. Pages. Uh, let's go ahead and just do a crease, crease level of two. I guess we can do a crease all. Actually, you know what? Let's do a Q grid. So instead of all this stuff, we're just going to do a Q grid and then coverage. And kind of bevel those edges in a little bit. Okay, something like that. That'll be our start. Let's go to the middle here, and that's really let's unify this. I'm going to stay deformation unify. We're going to stay right in the middle of the world. And now this is Z forward. So if we want our book binding to be this way, let's go ahead. I don't need it that thick. And also maybe we can even do let's inflate this. We'll inflate that a little bit too. Okay, so that'll be our start. Now, let's figure out how we're going to do our overall book binding. So maybe about the yay big. So I'm going to go to subtool and we'll just append a cube or a Q cube and we'll unify this cube. So now I'm going to turn on transparent. And we can scale this in. 
and we can scale this out. So this will be our book binding. I'm going to move this back just a little bit. So I'm looking at some old books. It looks like the cover does uh, go out quite a, not quite a bit, but it's going to be thicker on this back end. And then I'm going to like move this out. And we don't need any of this other stuff. We can insert single edge loop here. And we can take this, hold down Alt, and then we'll delete a single poly here. And you know what, we'll delete this one, and we'll delete this one too. So now we need thickness on this thing. So let's go to QMesh, all polygons, and we'll just give this binding some thickness here. And also, let's go ahead and work across symmetry here. So again, we're Z forward, we're just going to do a quick mirror and weld. And now we can scale this in. Now, if I want to make this binding thicker, since we have a polygroup on the outside, a polygroup on the inside, we can just hold down shift. Um, oops, go out of all polygons, do polygroup all. So now you can just push along those normals, as well as these interior ones, although these ones are separate. So let's go ahead and grab all these polygons here. Hit control W. And now these are all one polygroup. And then also, uh, if you don't like that one, you can try getting rid of that, and now it'll extrude along here. Although it's not doing a great, great job. Uh, you can also uh, just do group by normals, and then do a quick mirror and weld to make sure it's the same on both sides. And now we have our book binding that we can start with. So we have the beginnings of some sort of book. Cool. Thanks for showing up, everybody. Uh, something uh, bothering me for some time when I'm importing something to Blender Maya and ZBrush to get that low poly feeling. Uh, probably because they have normal smoothing on. And ZBrush doesn't have, oh, it does have normal smoothing. Under just draw smooth tolerance. Somewhere, somewhere in here you do have the option to smooth your normals on render. Uh, but while you're working in ZBrush, they don't smooth their normals. So that's why. In Maya, for example, if you're sculpting and you have a low poly object, it looks nice and smooth, and you start sculpting, you're pulling around very few points, but it looks smooth is because normal smoothing is turned on. Uh, in ZBrush, you don't have that, so you have to subdivide. Um, Sam asked, uh, tell me how to color my meshes and also how to convert it to Photoshop for tidying up. Uh, poly painting is going to be your best bet. Um, I'm trying to think if I have a decent poly painting one. As far as the going into Photoshop, all you got to do if I want to take this thing into Photoshop uh, and poly paint. So basically poly paint this thing using RGB color. And then you go, if you want to do it manually, you can go to render. Let's turn on perspective here. Render. Uh, turn on render properties. Or sorry, render pass. And now if we do a BPR render right up here, that's going to go through and render shadows and all that cool stuff. And then if you go to your render menu, let's drag this over here. You can go to your render uh, pass here and you can export your shaded as a as a PSD and then your depth. You can use for depth blur and then shadow. You know, I do go over this. Ah, oh, do I have it on my channel? I have it on my Gumroad page. The uh, Intro to Zebras Part 3 goes over all of that poly painting, rendering, uh, compositing, and photo, and uh, Photoshop. You can also go into the Z plugins here in ZBrush and you have ZBrush to Photoshop. You can just click this send to Photoshop after you've hit BPR render. Or no, actually just send to Photoshop. It'll do a BPR render for you, I believe. And it'll export all this into Photoshop in a nice little tidy Photoshop document or Photoshop file. Uh, when I divide it, some parts get the wrong proportions, and Dynamesh needs to be cranked up in order to work and still a desired effect. Huh. I'm not sure about that one. And if you want to, if you're if you're brand new to ZBrush, go to my playlist here, and go to Intro to ZBrush Part One specifically. Whoa. Control copy. There we go. Go to my playlists and uh, Intro to ZBrush Part 1 will get you up and running in ZBrush. And also the Intro to uh, ZBrush 4 R8, what's new, go to that playlist and that'll get you caught up pretty quickly. P 
pinch point on the bind. What's that pinch point? So if you have this one, is there a pinch option? You can go into the pinch brush and you can pinch it out. Um, hmm. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna totally uh, beef this up with all sorts of cool stuff. But this is just like the beginning, so we'll see. Will this page pattern bake correctly? Yeah, it just depends on how. This is just geometry. So if you if you wanted to make sure that these bevels bake correctly, you're going to want to go into your. Uh, what are we looking for here? Geometry dynamic. And then, so if I have dynamic turned on for this one, we have Q grid turned on. Um, you're going to want to make sure you hit apply, and that'll make it real geometry because right now it's just a preview. You can turn it on and off. You can do Shift D and D to preview that on and off. Um, same thing for this one. We're going to get into the dynamics a little bit more on this book. So you want to apply, and then if you just cover this with a box or whatever, you want to bake that to a texture sheet. Uh, it should bake fine. Now you could get a more pattern on here, in which case. You may need to probably try, let's try this. Let's take this and say, you know what? That's just too much detail, not enough clumping. So I'm gonna take a big chunk of this, do Control Shift A, invert that, delete hidden. And now we can go through here and we'll center this and we'll just, we'll use less pages. So now our clumps are a little bit bigger. And if that's not enough, now you could have done this in your Dynamesh settings, delete hidden, or not your Dynamesh settings, your That's too many. You could have done this in your nanomesh settings. Let's go delete hidden W. There we go. That reads a little bit better from a distance, not quite as noisy. Um, you can also go through here. So we go control W. Let's say we want a couple pages sticking out. So let's grab we got the, all these pages in here, so I'm going to hold down Control shift We're going to grab little pieces of a couple of them. Hold down Control alt we'll grab this one, this one, and this one. Invert that, Control shift a uh, If we don't want this one, we can do Control shift a and then invert that. So now we can do... We can make a polygroup of these. I tend to want to just like split these things out and then do an auto groups so that they're separate. And now each one of these I can handle differently. If I control tap any one of these polygroups and then reset, I can go through here now and I can like move this page out. Like it came loose from its binding or we can pull it out. And if we need to, let's do shift D, turn off, um, dynamic and in fact if I'm going to be playing around with this a lot I'm just going to go ahead and separate this one out too. We're going to go ahead and split this one and now we can go through here and we can do a quick insert a uh, single edge loop. We'll put one here and maybe one here to kind of control and now we can hold down control alt and then we can just kind of rotate this down and you can have more fun with this if you want to do insert multiple edge loops along here and we'll do an uncrease all. And it's still inheriting our, dynamic, our dynamic property, so we're not really changing that. But you just go through here now and just kind of rough these up and kind of bend these corners. So now you have like a page that's a little bit gross. D turned on. Oh, also use your deformers. So we can hit W here. Let's go to the center of this thing and we'll reset that back to world. And now we can go to anyone. I mean, if you want to do like crazy, def not crazy, but like crazy in this case, because you probably don't want to bend a page like this, but um, you can use your bend deformers. I'm probably going to use like an overall, like a, this would be like a lattice tool in Maya. You can make it like this. And if you want to just simplify this out a lot, um, now you can just grab these individual points and move them around, or you can mask like these top two points and just move this thing. You can rotate these two. So feel free to kind of go through here and we can pull these down. And we can say, yeah, accept that. <laughs> 
Okay. So now we got a nasty leaf sticking out of there. And we also have more uh, objects in here if you just want to center these and maybe push these out individually. And then you can merge them all back down together if you want. I'm just going to do my hotkey for merge. That's subtool merge. And we'll shoot this one to the top. Uh, when I'm saving stuff, I like to have, we'll do append. And we'll do a, just a star. We'll shoot that to the top here. And if I go into my scale, I can just scale that down really small. So when I go to save this, Now we got our book. Goal. Whoops. Um, John, you said, I totally forgot to bridge two polys and Z modeler from two separate pieces. I did the edge bridge instead. How do you do the face bridge? Um, yeah, that's what I would normally do. So for example, um, actually, well, let me show you that when we do a, a thing later. What we can do is, if you want to bridge two faces like this, so we've got a face here, we can bridge two polys, and it would it's just going to be a straight bridge, though. Um, if you want to bridge two open faces, you can go delete. Here, it's actually just bridging two holes. And then bridge two holes, and then you can use different settings to kind of bridge these two things together, like so. Um, if you want to bridge two adjacent faces, you can bridge connected polys, and you can turn them like circle, align to normal, triangle sides, and then you can just make perfectly circular bridges through here. Or through here. And you just got to find that little orange line. I'm going to go ahead and bridge those together. And if they're two arbitrary holes, you can bridge them. I mean, you can you can bridge anything you want. You can bridge this to this if you want to. Let's see where I should figure it out. Then do your resolution like this. So probably two holes is your best bet. I think. Do you feel as if some kind of solid body is needed between all those pages? Uh, you can throw one in there if you want to. Uh, it's not a huge deal. So you could put, yeah, if, if you if you feel like there's going to be some not enough overlap in here, um, you could throw a cube down the middle, like even back through here. This could give you a, a nod normal bake back through here. Um, you could also go through here manually and just use like the inflate brush. Keep it loose. There we go. Something like that. And there, yeah, and that's the other thing too, is something like this, I'm doing that Q mesh to get the beveling in between so that you have, that it does go back and down and in. It doesn't go like razor sharp straight back because that will definitely give you some normal errors. This could too, you know, feel free to play around. In fact, if you want to, you could, you could insert, instead of doing a really simple page like I'm doing to keep my poly count down, you could do a slightly more complex page and then you could run even some deformation noise through it a little bit just to kind of wiggle it up just a tiny bit. Cool. But yeah, if you want to play it safe, then yeah, for sure, throw a, throw a cube in there. Oh, uh, that's another good point. So, um, yeah, so if you wanted to make just an envelope for this, you could just dynamesh it together. That's what I probably end up doing. Um, but also, you could dynamesh, hmm, go ahead and inflate this up too. 
you don't want to have to deal with that. And again, this this could look terrible, but we can go through here manually. And if we have uh, mask by polygroup turned on, let's go to brush, auto masking, mask by polygroup up to 100. We can maybe pull this down so they're not so obviously busted. And again, it's pages in a book, so I guess if I'm doing like IMAX renders, I'd want to be careful. But if it's just a prop that somebody's holding from this distance, I think we'll be okay. Cool. All right. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's keep going. So we've got our binding here. So let's see what kind of binding we want to make. Also, let me look and see how books, I need to do some research here. Let's Google book binding. I need a good side view. That'll work. So from the side. It looks like the pages, yeah, the pages are gonna follow that binding in there. So what we're gonna have to do is first we're gonna bend this thing out. So one way to bend this thing out is to insert single edge loop. We'll go ahead and get rid of this and then we'll insert multiple edge loops and we'll give it some resolution. And then um, we'll mask control alt. Or you know what? Let's go ahead and just bridge these two because I want to control it that way and I don't want to have to deal with doing a deformation on this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all this, invert that, delete hidden, and then I'm going to hold down control shift. We're going to clip these vertices back. And now let's turn on double and we'll go ahead and bridge two holes spine again like we did earlier. And then we can just pull that out. Now if you want to change the shape of that, you want to do like uh, small round corners, you can do that and that'll keep your corners a little bit tighter like so, um, or you can just have it bow out completely. I think, let's see, small round corners or possibly tight round corners. Could also work. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, and then we need to have these pages go all the way back. So I'm gonna grab these points here, push these back, and they do need to bend uh, slightly so if I mask these out, and then we do another, let's go to the middle here, we're gonna do a def deformation, deformer, and we're gonna put more resolution this away. So now I can hold down control and drag, and then control drag alt to unmask this, and now we can pull these points out, let's pull them straight out, and then mask these off, and then pull these straight out. There we go. So now that'll just follow that back binding a little bit better. That seems to match because most of the binding I'm looking for doesn't do like a huge arc. It does a little bit tighter. Let's turn off mass by polygroups. Alrighty. So far so good, everybody? Alright. So let's go through here and start... Uh, making this a little bit more presentable. So how do I want to beef this up? If I just want to do start doing some quick concepty stuff and then build this thing for real later, what I can do is I, go, I want to keep this geometry around because it's simple and I can go through and modify it as needed. Um, but with this here, let's do, uh, we'll do a group by normals because I hit control W and hold on. Um, let's pop in, insert single edge to make this a little bit easier to grab. And I'm gonna grab all these interior, hold that control shift, and grab all these interior polygroups here. Actually, let's grab these exterior ones. Invert that, delete hidden. And now I wanna just, I'm just gonna bridge these. So let's go to bridge, edges. And I really don't care how it handles this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do a close holes, geometry close holes operation. And I'm just going to go to turn off blur, turn off project and dynamesh this thing. So now we have just a book sitting here. So I'm going to hide my binding temporarily. And now, I mean, we do know that there are pages in here. So this, I don't care about the reason why 
I chose to do a close holes is because I guess we go ahead and mask this out just because I don't want to have to deal with like thin geometry here. So if I just do this, mask it, invert that mask by control tapping, and then we'll do an inf a deflate. We can deflate this geometry in here, and we can just go through and we can clip this back. Do a clip curve. Again, I'm just playing it fast and loose because I just want to get my ideas out. I don't really care about um, you know doing a whole bunch of box modeling if I don't have a design in I in mind. So this is where I utilize Dynamesh. Just play fast and loose. We'll do a quick mirror and weld. Hit X to go across X symmetry. Now we don't necessarily want this to be symmetrical, but we'll give it a shot to start out with. So we have our Dynamesh book here. Now on this one, if you do have a bunch of alphas, let's see if we have any brushes that are kind of interesting. They have hard surface stuff. This will probably look like a... If we do uh, hard surface stuff like this, it'll look like a book out of, I don't know, Halo or something. Um, probably don't want to do a sci-fi book necessarily. What's going on here? Going through the mesh, X symmetry, mirror and weld. Let's turn on auto masking, back face masking. There we go. But um, if you did have like a bunch of, I'm just trying to remember if I even have like more ornate. We, we went over engraving and doing like ornate patterns that you can go ahead and stamp in. And we will do some of that later. We can also use surface noise for that. Uh, but for now, what I'm going to do is let's just have a little bit of fun. So I have a book here, and on one side of this book, I want to do mask perfect circle. And we'll start with just a simple circle. I can also, if I'm a little afraid, I can go through here and just add a sphere. And then we can push the sphere down and then go ahead and split mask points. And we can, let's go control mask pin. It'll inherit the Dynamesh property. So now this is a Dynameshed prop. Um, version separately so then we can just go through we can like say clip this back and then use our clay brush to kind of poke this in a little bit and we can use radial symmetry too if we want to um, I think we can still do it even here if it's if our if we're positioned in here we can turn on transform let's turn on L sim for local symmetry and then we'll turn on radial symmetry um, So then, no matter where this is positioned, we can go through here. We can start doing whatever kind of design we want. Um, also, yeah, you're right. I don't want to do this on both sides. So, oh, there's another thing. So if you're clipping, um, if you ever want to change that to a drag rectangle temporarily, you can hold down, uh, just tap Control, and that'll switch it over, and then you can go back to clipping all you want. So now we have this thing here. So let's go ahead and say uh, we want to do... We want to do radial symmetry sculpting. I'm going to change this resolution up a little bit. And let's say, is there anything cool we can make here? Mm -hmm -hmm. Let's do, let's lower this down. So let's go to transform here and do a radio count of like five. We can just start pulling this out. Um, we can also do snake hook, might be a better option. So as you're pulling this out and around, you can just control to keep control dragging. And now you can have this kind of spiraling outwards and you can modify it as needed. Um, or let's do something a little bit more, hold on alt, a little bit more graphic. Let's, you know what, let's simplify this even more. Let's do four. And instead of, if you can do a radial count of four and that'll allow you to kind of pull in a direction. Um, but if you just want to pull straight out, what might be a better option is under transform, we can do X and Z, X and Y. No. Oh, X and these are going to be, that's a local sim across that axis. And then this is across that axis. Ugh. Okay. Well, we can always just mirror and weld this with LSIM turned on across the Y if we need to. So as we're modifying this or across the Z. So as we modify this piece here, we can do a mirror and weld. Let's work on this side, I suppose. Let's see. We'll go here. 
this out, and then we'll do a mirror and weld across the z-axis. Ah, oh, but we're changing the local symmetry. Hmm. What we could do is we could work in the middle and then use a ray mesh to put that over there. And then, of course, it's going to crash on the save in progress. Luckily, we didn't lose anything. We just have to restart ZBrush. Let's see if it kept my window. <laughs> yep. There we go. Okay. Did that position my window correctly at least? No, I didn't. Oh, my God. Why? Maybe because it crashed. Okay. So whenever it does that, it'll throw you in here and you get your recovered Z tool here. You just load that up. Yeah, we're back where we started. Okay, so uh, back to where we were. Let's go ahead and undo that. And we can go ahead and clip this back. So we're going to clip the circle center. And we're just going to clip this back here. Uh, X symmetry. Let's turn off X symmetry. To make my life a little bit easier, what I'm going to do is we'll go ahead and delete that. I'm going to append a cylinder, and then on the cylinder, I'm going to rotate it. So I know this is going to be correct across the world axis. So now I don't even need local symmetry on. I can just start modifying this thing here. Um, if I do want to kind of clean this up a little bit, I can go through here with ZModeler first. If you have a bunch of edges in there you don't want, because we just took this primitive as is, we should be able to go to geometry. And then D -D -D, edge loop complete, and we will do uh, delete loops. There it is. Get rid of those. Now we can do like a bevel edge loop complete here. And if you want to round these edges out, we can go to insert multiple edge loops interactive elevation. We can pull this out and around. So now we have something like this. And then you can uh, go in here and you can crease, dynamic, apply, and then we can just convert this over to a Dynamesh. So we can just kind of play around with it a little bit. So if we did want to do, um, <laughs> we can go to, I do, we do have a brush chisel 3D. We can put an, uh, an eyeball in here, a little creature eyeball. And then of course we're gonna turn on back face masking. So if you don't want to do a really quick eyeball on your book. That'd be one way to do it. Um, but let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, let's do like snakes or dragons or, a, a, you know, if this little brush insert, let's see if we can play around with maybe IMM. Let's go to this dragon bones here. I'm going to steal this cranium and we'll hit X symmetry. We'll go transform do I want to do X symmetry across here? Let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on transpose all selected subtools. I'm going to go to the top here. I'm going to put this right in the middle of the world. Like so. And I'm just going to hold down shift and let's go back to our pages here unmask, hold on shift, I'm just going to rotate this forward because I really don't care about this being symmetrical. This being symmetrical uh, is a little bit more important to me and we want to be Z forward. And then turn off, transpose all multiple. There we go, a little bit better. So now, oh, this will work so much better. So we have Dynamesh turned on. Uh, now when we do X symmetry, transform, we'll do X and Y symmetry. So now we can just take these things out and let's move this over. So now we can just do whatever we need to. Um, it should work fine. And also radial symmetry will just be in the um, Z direction. So we can still do radial symmetry. Whew. Okay. When in doubt, make it easier on yourself. Okay, so we can also just do insert mesh brushes too if you want to insert a cube uh, onto this thing. Um, we don't have to split it, I guess not. Uh, but on this one, you're going to want to turn on local symmetry so it doesn't start going from the middle. And then here, let's tap Alt on the back of this thing here so we can transform from this angle. And then we'll shoot these out the corners here. 
push those back. We can go ahead and uh, split mass points if we want to. We can slide these things in or slide these things around, or we don't even have to split them. We can just merge these things down together, dynamesh them together, and now we can just smooth these things out and clip them back like this. Again, if we're just getting our ideas in and I'm not really too concerned about what it's going to look like, you just go through here and just start making changes as needed. Go in here with our H polish brush, trim dynamic, all your regular sculpting brushes here. You can go trim dynamic on this thing here. And then we'll turn radial symmetry on. Let's turn lazy radius off. And we'll turn our smooth up to smooth stronger. Again, this won't be our final result, but it'll at least uh, be something we can kind of play around with. We can go through and H-polish this. Okay, so we've got this going, and the book behind it, we can always change. If we want to move just the book, we can hold down Control shift go to Select Rectangle, unmask everything, and then the book and the pages. And we can move together, and I guess the Dynamesh. Let's turn back on our actual book binding. Oh, we forgot to rotate that around. Yeah, you know, we'll get to that later. So this one here, we're going to turn off X and we're just going to scooch this forward a little bit. There we go. Cool. Oh yeah, never ending story. I forgot about that. All right, Mike, see you later. Um, I'm probably going to have to go in about five minutes here. Yes, and use some 3D text. That's a good point. Now, what kind of text do I want to do? I wonder if we have, do we have like really old English text? I might have to do a little bit of font exploration on this. We can also just make our own text that we can extrude. Um, this one might be tough, but if you want to make your own text, we'll go to Z plug in here. This will be in the intro to ZBrush 4R8, what's new. ZBrush 4R8, what's new. And we'll go into text here. Let's see if we have any. We can also do vector shapes. We can import some vector shapes if you have some drawn out um, from SVGs. Uh, let's see. New text. Take this one here. And we'll do <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to find find something in here that would be a good Uh just to remind you my magnanimous direction. Yes, so thank you. So if anybody's just catching uh watching, you're gonna want if we turn on our floor here. Oh, we yeah, have our floor turned on. Um, have your object Z forward, and then if they're just sitting out here, here's here's a fun thing. So if we have that, and we go to, I guess it doesn't really matter what we use. We use a sphere 3D. There we go. Uh, insert nano mesh on a single poly, and we grab that text. So when we pull this out, it should be facing forward at us. Now when we did the arrow, I forgot that we didn't have an up and a down plane, but at least you know it'll be somewhat uh, usable. Now, if you wanted that to wrap on the sphere, what I, I wouldn't use nano mesh, or I guess you could use nano mesh, but you have to use matchmaker. What I would do is number one, let's hopefully this doesn't do anything weird. Let's do adaptive off so we get a little bit more resolution, evenly spaced. <clears throat> then we can go to brush, create insert mesh new, and we're going to go back to our poly mesh sphere, and then we can just uh, drag that out. Now, when we do drag this out, it's not going to stick, so we're going to have to go to our brush, 
and then our modifiers, and then we're going to turn on our projection strength up to, well, uh, we'll do it to 100. And then as we're dragging that onto the object, it's wrapping around the object here. So then if you split this off, you can also, if you're so inclined, we'll do a crease poly group, uh, crease PG, maybe smooth that out a little bit, and then we can do a subtractive mesh. And now you can actually cut this in to your object. So that could be part of your ornamentation as well. It's just like the engraving of text and stuff. You can use a live Boolean for that. That'll give you that. Or if you don't want to, turn that off and it can just be sticking out. In which case, probably when you went to drag that te text on, we did it at a opacity of 100%. Um, again, if you want to do that strength multiplier, um, we have to be on the sphere here. You can crank that strength multiplier up, and then it'll punch out even further. So now this one will give us a little bit more leeway. Really dig in. And if you wanted little bevels in there, you can go back to your text here, and you can build those bevels in. So if we go over here to the text. Uh, what are we doing? We have this selected. We need our text here, and we'll say... Uh, bevel up, so now we have little bevels built in, and you can tell it, uh, you can also do extrusion if you want to make the letters thicker, and then resolution, spacing, adaptive bevel, bevel resolution, you can put a little bit more bevel resolution in there, and then the curvature, after you've added resolution, you can add curvature to it, so it'll go ahead and round those edges out. Alright. Cool. Um... Uh, hello everybody. I'm going to actually head out, unfortunately. I've got to get ready for some stuff this morning. But anyways, hopefully uh, we have our book blocked out. We've got our pages going. This is going to be the start of our whole new project we're going to start. It's going to be um, it's kind of a black cauldron zombie warrior type thing. Uh, just because we can make a bunch of stuff and insert it around and have a little bit of fun. So we'll finish this out uh, next time. We'll have a really nice book. We can go in and render and do binding and have little inserted nails and jewels and skulls and snakes and all sorts of cool stuff on this so i don't know it'll be fun cool all righty everybody thanks for showing up see y'all next week um pixelogic channel i don't think i'll be on i think i'm gone tuesday but i should be on back on my channel next thursday um so see you there thank you everybody